Jared Lauren, thanks for hopping on today to uh, to discuss our services. Um, but first and foremost, give us a, a bit of a brief rundown, you guys. What you guys, what you guys do for a living? Um, and and Jen, how you how you come to find us? So I'm Lauren. This is Jared. Not the other way around. Uh, we're both school teachers, and we've got two little twin boys who've just turned three. And how do we find you guys? Funnily enough, through Instagram, I reckon was actually how we tracked you guys down. So. I would say that we're relatively good with our finances. Uh, we're sort of in tracking, but we were sort of really in that place of, are we still doing the right thing to secure ourselves the best we can for our future uh, and for the goals of what we really wanted to hit? So I was kind of in the back of my mind going, we're going to need a financial advisor at some point, I think, just to give us that peace of mind. I was actually uh, a good friend on Instagram in the finance space as well that I was talking to, and she was a client uh, of John's. Uh, and so I think she directed me to a good old Facebook group, actually, that I think AFA have. And I did this little wealth card, I think, assessment it was. And I noticed that in terms of our financial literacy, we were okay, but we needed some strategies around tax minimization um, and just some stuff around investing. So we thought, why not? I think we booked an initial call and, you know, I think we're, God, over 12 months in, we're still here. Well, that's it. That's it. And you sort of touched on this just then, but I'd like you to dig a bit deeper. So... Before meeting with us, what were the specific challenges you faced around money and finance? Because as you said, you were you are quite good around your money and things, particularly around cash flow. You've actually built your own little business around cash flow. So you're actually very, very good with cash flow. So yeah, what were the specific sort of challenges you sort of before you sort of dealt and came with to see us? I think it was really just knowing that we were still doing the right things in terms of getting towards our goals like ideally we want to be in a financial situation where I suppose we don't have to work by the time we're you know 50 would be great like we will still work we're not going to sit around and do nothing but we'd love to be in a financial position where that's kind of optional if we need it to be and I just don't think we had the knowledge then of what vehicles were going to be best for us to get there uh, and also I really had no idea around tax minimization of all of that sort of stuff so it was I think for us either, you know, we keep going the way we were going, which was very much more of a saving mindset. Like, let's just save, 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 save. But, you know, in this day and age, saving's probably not going to get you to a financial freedom sort of level. Uh, or, you know, we bite the bullet and go see someone. And I think for us, it was really not wanting to get sort of 15 years down the track and be like, what? We're still going to need to work for another 20 years before we can even think about not working. So it was really just going, no, nah, we need someone, I think, from the outside looking in knowing that we're, you know, doing the right things and really sort of putting in the groundwork to, to hit those goals um, while still enjoying life. I think that's really important too. Absolutely. We don't definitely don't take too much away from you in terms of lifestyle. So it's definitely very, very important. And as you said, like you said, you might, you're going to reach out to a financial advisor at some point anyway in your, in your future. What made you just go out to sign on us? There's lots of financial advisors around. What got, what made you lean towards John and the team at AFA Group Wealth? That's a good question. I know I feel like I've been doing all the talking. Was there anything for you, Jared, that I know stood out for AFA when we first met with? Everything John? was really relatable. Um, and like a lot of the information was sort of in the initial calls and stuff was very simplified. Like we were dabbling with some investing and things like that, but with no direction really it was just like let's just put some money here and see what happens and yeah i think once we had that initial call was sort of like explained to us that you know we're doing fine but we can definitely do it better yeah as I, well. I think we'd had money in pretty much every brokerage account three apps you can have uh we possibly still have a little bit of money sitting in those but we'll get in there we're, we're getting rid of them but i think also when we spoke with john initially he kind of really said to us that he likes to work with couples around our age um, that are, I suppose, really sort of on that sort of financial freedom kind of journey. I got that feeling from John. I'm sure he works with other types of clients, but I felt like it was just a really good fit. Plus, he's a pretty good salesman, I would say. Pretty good. And he's, you know, very knowledgeable, which helps as well, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's definitely very knowledgeable and can and can talk can talk a lot too. So uh, <laughs> he's very good at that when it comes to that type of thing. And now you are about 12, probably 14 months into the relationship. How do you think our process has sort of helped you guys save time and money so far? I think for me, it's just given us peace of mind that we're on the right track uh, and that if we keep going down this path, we'll get where we want to go. 
Uh, in saying that, though, and I'm sure lots of people go through this, I do feel like we're in this boring stage, as you know, Mason. Like we've got childcare costs at the moment, which is a huge expense. So we probably can't accelerate our wealth as much as we want to. Um, and so we're in this sort of boring phase, which I know a lot of people find the trickiest. So I'm really looking forward to sort of staying on with AFA in a couple of years when we've got a bit more cash flow in the, and the kids are in school, you know, what you know options we have there to make our financial situation even better. I think that's a really good point you raised there, Lauren, as in, yeah, you guys are in that sort of stage where you've got lots of expense with childcare and young ones and things, unfortunately, they, they don't really go away. Um until uh until a lot a lot later in life so but sticking through and navigating these difficult times is something that we can i think we can really help with and i hope you guys have found that at this point so far but when you guys initially engaged with us as a as a, as a group is there anything about working with us, with us that you thought was different or something that you didn't expect or something like what did you expect when you sort of work with financial advisors and how did we sort of meet that or exceed that or maybe even didn't even meet that expectation? Great question. It's funny. Maybe what I had pitched in my head when we're going to meet with a financial advisor was a 60-year-old bloke. I don't know. I don't know whether you had that. So that was new. Um, and I think I I think what AFA do really well for us, and I mean, we haven't had experience with other financial advisors, to be totally honest, but knowing that we can chat to AFA whenever we want. And obviously, Mason, you're our amazing financial advisor and I message you all the time <laughs> and I'm sure you're like, oh, Lauren's here again. But just knowing that we can, you know, contact you in regards to anything. So uh, if the market's going up and down, you know, if we're feeling anxious about anything, we've just gone through a process talking about investment properties, which has been a really fun and interesting journey. But knowing that, that you can jump on calls with us and really support us through that uh, and really sort of look at scenarios of, you know, what's the worst case scenario for this and, and kind of work through from that outside perspective, taking that sort of emotion out of it that we obviously have because it's, you know, our money and our future. Um, do you have anything you want to add? I just think initially, like, all the projections and stuff really helped as well. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Sort of understanding this is where we're at now. Based on all the data and all that sort of stuff, this is where things can end up. You know, obviously, it's always going to be up for change, but... Um, at least there's something to sort of have in the back of your mind. I think before that, we were sort of just buying blind, as I said before. Yeah. So, winging it. Yeah, very much so. Um, whereas having that sort of in the back of your mind helps, I think, as well, in terms of a lot of the goals we have. And we know that there's an end game eventually. So, working towards that definitely helped as well. And that I didn't think that was a thing. So, <laughs> having, yeah, having those projections and like it's, it's a client favorite, they, they really do love them because. You can see what your decisions you're making today, how they impact you 20 years from now, or is likely to impact you 20 years from now. I always like to say they are a guide only because hard to project the future, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, they're a, definitely a client favorite when it comes when it comes to advice and something we really pride ourselves on. Um, it's quite exciting building building financial futures for people. Um, you saying what decisions what decisions can we make now that's gonna affect us 20 years from now? It's awesome stuff. Um but no, that's that's fantastic. And Lauren, you mentioned as well you completed our wealth scorecard, and there was also a lot of questions on the wealth scorecard. And as you know, money is quite an emotional sort of topic. How do you how do you feel if you were to take the wealth scorecard again today? Do you think the questions would or the answers would be the same as they were, or do you think they'd be a bit different to what they what they were? I definitely think they'd be different. I couldn't tell you exactly how they'd be different, but I do know through this process we've you know done some other questionnaires I think about our, our risk profile and I think even since working together our risk profile has changed and I think that is because of the education AFA provide as well like obviously there's the lunchtime money there's the podcast there's so many things that we have access to uh, that we can really learn from and educate ourselves which I think then just helps us to know we're kind of on the right journey and helps us to take the emotions out of the everyday stuff because it's all long term so I would hope that maybe I'll go do the wealth scorecard again. Not that I actually remember what the score was I got the first time, but I would hope that it would definitely be higher because of the education that we've got and the support we've got from AFA. Oh, fantastic. That's awesome. That's, oh, that's great to hear. And yeah, definitely, definitely take it again. Um, Cause yeah, it's, it's exciting to see where you sort of grow and like, and there might be some areas where you have, haven't moved at all. It might even move backwards. Sometimes we said some of the clients, they might move backwards in there and then we know, 
when you need to focus on this area because you're not confident or whatever purpose it might be, life changes. Um, so the wealth scorecard is going to change with life as well. But guys, what what advice would you give to someone or one of your friends or your family or whoever if they're looking to get advice from any financial advisor and hopefully through us? Ooh, what advice would I give? I think just... Go to John. <laughs> go, go to John or Mason, definitely Mason. Um, I think also just be willing to get on a call and see how you feel talking to someone. Um, I think for us in the end, it was, you know, we did go off a gut feel. We were like, oh, you know, this is an expense. You know, you talk about our cash flow. I like to know what our cash flow is doing and that is an expense to our cash flow. But we know we can see the long-term benefits. And I know when we initially signed up, we'd say, we'll do it for 12 months. We'll see how we feel. Uh, we're still here and plan to be here quite a while yet. Um, just while we sort of navigate the next couple of years, especially when cash flow changes and and then how we can accelerate. So I think for anyone looking for a financial advisor, it'd be really getting in contact with them, having a conversation, seeing whether they align to what your goals are and um, how do you feel talking to them? Because obviously money for most people is a very taboo subject. So talking about money to someone, I think you need to feel comfortable. And I know, you know, we feel very comfortable with you, Mason. It was lovely to see your face pop up today when we were doing this. So um, not that we don't love you too, John, uh, but, you know, we feel comfortable to talk about anything with you. Oh, that's, that's fantastic here. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, it's always nice to hear. And yeah, it's 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 quite a daunting thing to talk about money, as you said. So, and we we definitely don't take it lightly that when clients pick up the phone or send us an email to to reach out because we know it's a massive step and there's a lot of thinking that goes behind that phone call or that email before it's sent. Um, often it could be 12 months, six months, a couple of years worth of umming and ahhing before you eventually do reach out. So it's quite a quite a huge decision. So um, we definitely don't take it lightly here at AFA Group Wealth, but Guys, thank you for thank you for hopping on and discussing um, your experience with us so far. It's great to hear these things. But before I let you guys go, is there anything else you'd like to sort of add to to sort of round off the conversation? Mm-hmm. Mate, look, just if you think about it, just give it a go, have a call, and see see what you think. It's like we found it beneficial, and I'm sure other people as well. Yeah, I suppose it's just. Give it a go, find that person you connect with and and have that peace of mind and and that person that you can talk to if you're ever concerned about your money. Um, because ideally, you know, we don't all want to have to still work till we're 75. That's it, guys. That's it. Well, thank you for thank you for hopping on, as I said. Um, really appreciate your insights. And I think a lot of people get a lot of value out of watching this and just learning a bit more about what we do and how we help. Um, I think it's really, really beneficial. So really appreciate your time, guys. And um, yeah. Um, look forward to working for you for many, many years to come. No worries at all, Mason. She does. <laughs>